I would like to ask you two questions and the answers of which you know better than me and before me. Did you know that St. Gertrude the Great entered the Abbey of Rodeldorf at five years of age and then later ruled her Abbey as abbess for 40 years? Did you also know that she wrote in Latin with unusual elegance and force. So that means the younger sisters has to roll the sleeves and start to study their Latin. The answer to these two questions, which both of them is yes, shows me that this is a great saint, a great woman of tremendous determination. Can you imagine entering at five, you know, so determined what she was to give her whole life to God and then battling it out in the trenches for decades with a massive amount of grit and determination, but not trusting in her own uh, efforts, but rather relying heavily upon the two great devotions that she had, which was the Holy Eucharist and the Blessed Virgin, the Sacred Heart. These two facts, the answer to those two questions, uh, yes and yes, show me that she was a great Benedictine saint. And that's very useful for our reflection today. This determined spirit lived and it lives within the Benedictine tradition. And so if I would like to rip out a page out of the great, another determined saint, which was the great Saint Alphonsus Liguori, uh, who is known for his resilience and his spirituality. He says that there's three means to obtaining salvation with the grace of God. The first being diffidence of self. Secondly, trust in God. And thirdly, resistance of temptations. And so I will forego the first two, but I would like to just focus on this third point, the resistance, that grit, that determination to resist temptations. Because resistance to temptation seems like a Gertrudean principle that she was very much engaged in. And we would like to ask her into session to grant us that same resolve, that same love. <clears throat> so what does determination against temptation look like? It's very true that when we have recourse to God, and most likely, right off the bat, uh, He will give us, because of that con uh, confidence, uh, He will allow us to be delivered from dangerous temptations that swirl around us, like sensuality and pride. But God sometimes wants us to see he wants to see out of us a little bit more determination. And so sometimes he may withhold the intervention for a little bit. This is the great mystery. Uh, he's looking for our collaboration. Remember, St. Augustine says that God created, created us without us, but then he did not redeem us without us. Uh, he wants to redeem us. Oh, he can only redeem us with us. And so our Lord Jesus uh, defines this spirit in his holy gospel. And he even uses the word, the forbidden word nowadays, uh, violence. Uh, remember back in the, in the 1960s, uh, 
the church was trying to get away from all these militaristic terms. They even re re-termed uh, the church herself in this existence on earth used to be called church militant. And now we have to say church pilgrim and all the rest of this stuff. Uh, um, but our Lord said it himself, uh, we have to have recourse to violence. Violence. Not an evil violence, of course, uh, but a holy vi violence. He says in the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 11, verse 12, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent bear it away. So those who are soaked in discipline, austerity, but not, not just a stoic austerity, or just because for the sake of it, but out of great love, great love for God. Um, there's a, a certain discipline that is sustained. And so when pestering temptations linger around, even after we beseech God's help, then it will be necessary to uh, turn up the vol volume, uh, multiply the prayers, not just the prayers, uh, but the, the groanings within the prayers, the, the desires, the holy affections within the prayers. Frequently, it may require us to prostrate ourselves before His throne of mercy, before the most august of sacraments. Many of our images of Our Lady and of the Sacred Heart here in the monastery may be bombarded by our sighs, cries, and tears. And those, don't worry about it, because those statues like that. They like to receive those, that besiege of sighs and cries and tears. But just don't show that too much to the other sisters. You know. <laughs> Got to be a little bit discreet. Uh, but our Lord is looking at them all. He loves them. And so... I guess what needs to be reflected upon is that the soul, when it's not determined, not disciplined enough, it's because the soul is irresolute. That's a real problem, especially for the younger sisters, there's no problem. But for the older sisters, you know, you get set in your ways and you've gone through a routine uh, half a billion times. And so it becomes um, a bit boring or um, I know it all and therefore we can become careless, can lose the first love. So when the soul is irresolute or lacking in that elbow grease, what's the immediate effect? Well, I hate to mention it, but it's tepidity. Uh, tepidity uh, could emerge. Tepidity comes out of retirement from its dormant position. The soul falls into a lethargic comfort zone where not much is given nor gained in the view of perfection and virtue. So St. Teresa of Avila says, of irresolute souls, the devil has no fear. So those who don't carry on with this great determination can easily be eaten up by demons. For scripture says, desires kill the slothful for his hands have refused to work at all. Proverbs chapter 21, 23. <clears throat> so what is the work of a monk or a, a monastic nun, a Benedictine? None. Uh, daughters of the great Saint Gertrude. And thus to become worthy of salvation. Well, besides uh, tending the garden and making sure your lettuce has a lot of water, uh, that's one thing, but that's just very small things. Uh, the biggest thing to do is to have frequent meditation, uh, constantly. Go back to the meditation. Um, now, meditation is not a good word 
because as we know in the Catholic tradition, meditation usually equates itself with the first steps of the purification process at the beginner's path toward God because meditation means something that you use a lot with the brains. And so you have to establish all the convictions first before you can have a whole future of divine, of divine union. But meditation is just a general term. What's more important is that we contemplate, that we unite the two wills, my will and his will, that we, um, that we self-empty by means of holy affection and thought and expression. Secondly, to re frequent the reception of the holy sacraments. And of course, there's two of those sacraments that we can receive so often, and that is confession and Holy Eucharist, the Holy Communion. How much our Lord promises us that of our peace when we have our sins forgiven. And also, He strengthens us by His sanctifying grace and, and Holy Communion. He gives us that great, that great friendship, nourishing friendship. When your best friend is privy to all your internal strifes, anguishes, joys, uh, aspirations. And then the third work of the monk is detachment from all creatures. Yeah, that's the hard one. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite brutal, you know. It's uh, you know when I when I had to go to Europe for ten years, um, it, it, there was no visits to your family, you know, while while you're in Europe, and so uh, you had to be detached. But when you're in the United States, oh, good thing I'm in the United States, and get a couple of visits here and there. <laughs> Say, wow, that was a long time. <laughs> but our Lord is good. He gives us so many opportunities to be able um, to forsake the things of the world, and even good things. He gives us a strength. But it's so hard because it's like trying to teach an old dog new tricks. We're so attached uh, to things and the way we do things, you know. So we have to learn that and beg our Lord every day. It's just the exercise of the heart. If that first means is done well, then that third one that we just mentioned is, is done well. So in other words, if we contemplate a lot, meditate, Almost through osmosis, our hearts, you know, like a big suction cup, you know, it pulls off of these things of, of our world. And we smush the suction cup to the things of heaven, where our Lord is so pleased with that. And we become more peaceful. And then the fourth and final way in which the monk rolls up those sleeves, is obedience, the f daily fulfillment of the duty and for the chores. Uh, this is very, very important as well. And it's hard to obey. It's, um, it's very difficult sometimes. So as we come up to communion, uh, as we continue the holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us pray these words of St. Gertrude the Great. Uh, maybe we won't use the same exact words, but something similar to this, her um, prayer. She says, she prays to our Lord and she says, I come to thee, O most loving Jesus, which she did all her life, right? Whom I have loved, sought, and always desired. Isn't that that grit, that holy grit? Mm. I come because of thy sweetness, thy pity, and thy charity. 
I come with all my heart, all my soul, and all my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.